Hello, I'm Nona Melkonian with SFGov TV. Along with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco, I'm here to discuss Proposition B, a ballot measure which will be before the voters on Tuesday, June 3rd. The city and county of San Francisco, through its port commission, administers about seven and a half miles of the waterfront and former waterfront along the San Francisco Bay. Currently, the city's zoning laws regulate development on this property, including the maximum allowed height. The existing height limits generally range from 40 feet to 84 feet. Changes in existing height limits usually require neighborhood notification, public hearings, and approval by the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors. These changes do not currently require the voters to approve a ballot measure. Proposition B would prevent the city from allowing any development on port property that exceeds height limits in effect as of January 1, 2014, unless the city's voters approve an increase in the height limit for that development. Any ballot question to increase height limits on port property must specify both existing and proposed height limits. If you vote yes, you want to prevent the city from allowing any development on port property to exceed the height limits in effect as of January 1, 2014, unless the city's voters have approved the height limit increase. If you vote no, you do not want to make this change. I'm here with Luis Rennie, former city attorney and a proponent of Proposition B. Welcome. Thank you. We're also joined by Patrick Valentino, community activist and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. Thank you very much. I'd like to start with some opening comments from each of you. Ms. Rennie, would you like to share your opening comments? Thank you, and thank you to the League for having us here this morning. I think we can all agree that the San Francisco waterfront is a truly special place. And if you do, we're asking the voters to vote yes on B. Yes on B is supported by the Sierra Club, the Neighborhood Alliance, the Affordable Housing Alliance, and over a hundred other San Francisco civic leaders and citizens. Proposition B is simple and straightforward. What it says is waterfront height limits should be enforced. And when the planners or the port want to exceed those height limits, then they should put that question to the voters. The Yes on B campaign is really uh, part of the outgrowth, if you will, of what we saw on the 8 Washington, where we would have had a high rise that would be twice the size of the old Embarcadero Freeway that went down. And fortunately, over 67% of the voters said, no, we don't want a wall on the waterfront. We don't want high towers. But Proposition B would say, if the planners of the Port Commission seek to exceed the height limits, then the voters have a chance to say yes or no. It's a vote and a choice by the voters. Thank you. Mr. Valentino, would you like to share your opening statement? Sure, and, and thank you uh, to the League for having us here today. Um, first off, uh, I'm a volunteer. I'm not a developer. Um, no, no developers are involved in our uh, support of the No on B campaign. And um, we're a coalition of community activists, environmentalists, uh, small businesses, and housing activists. We're in the middle of our greatest affordability crisis here in San Francisco. And the problem with Prop B, while it sounds good on its face, it takes com the complexity of development and boils it down to ballot box planning. And that is an enormous concern. We should be discussing how we can build more affordable housing, but instead we're flipping over to what height limits should be right or wrong along the waterfront. While that may be an important discussion to have, it leaves out the detail and the complexity of how we decide what to develop and what public benefits may come out of that process. A tall building, one or two tall buildings may give us parks, may give us better transit, may give us a significant amount of affordable housing. This proposition could kill 3,700 rental housing units, 600 affordable housing units, $124 million of affordable housing fees, and also cause significant problems for the port as far as developing and fixing problems it has with, its, uh, with the port lands. We're endorsed by the Democratic Party, the Parks Alliance, the City Democratic P Club, the Noe Valley Democrats, the Alice B. Toklas Democrats, and a host of others. Thank you. Thank you.
Mr. Valentino brings up some interesting points. There will be prospects of more jobs coming if the waterfront is expanded. How do you feel on what he said? Well, I think there are three issues that were brought up. First, is this ballot box planning? No, it isn't. If the planners follow the planning process and don't exceed the height limits, there's no problem. It's only when they do. And if you take a look at San Francisco history, since 1968, when the Burton Act applied, there have been 18 other ballot measures affecting the waterfront. The ballpark, for example, was approved by the voters. Ferry building, Hunters Point Shipyard, etc. Number two, what we're talking about is port property, which is owned by the public. And if you take a look at port property, it's held in public trust. And the housing argument is a red herring, because as a matter of fact, if port property is held in public trust, you can't build housing there. And number three, if that were waived, there is nothing in Prop B that says you cannot have a good, solid project be approved. That's happened in the past. So the housing argument is truly a red herring. And we saw the kind of housing that the port has proposed in the past, high-rise luxury condos. And if now all of a sudden they're saying, oh, we're only going to build low-cost housing, well, a, I'd like to see it, and B, I don't think that is going to happen. Thank you. Mr. Valentino, any thoughts? Sure. Uh, the housing is not a red herring. In fact, it, it is real facts. When you look at what the port is considering, and when you look at the projects that could be in the pipeline, they involve rental housing. If you follow the actual draft term sheets that are on the table, it's rental housing with occlusion, occlusionary affordable housing on site. The problem is, this is getting boiled down to if the voters like it, that's great. But the developers can pivot. And now they can come to the ballot box with either a specific or a general plan for a development. And if the voters say yes to that, there'll be no chance for mitigation under CEQA or mitigation in the planning process to, to hopefully get parks by way of example or maybe increase in affordable housing in exchange for heights. By way of example, um, if a park, when is that park going to be developed? Is it going to be put at the front of the process or at the back of the process? Is the affordable housing going to be uh, done in the beginning and spread out or will it be done all at the end? So there's quite a few challenges I think to uh, the questions asked. We're not talking about the ferry building or some of the historic piers changing as far as their bulk and their height. We're talking about areas that are off of the water's edge. They use the word waterfront. They fought to get the word waterfront into the ballot because they want people to think it's about the water's edge, and it's not. Last fall, voters disagreed with the Board of Supervisors' decision to uh, waive the charter's height restrictions for the 8 Washington project. Should the voters be asked if height restrictions be waived on any given port project? What we're saying is that on port property, publicly owned property, not private property, Developers can do what they want to do on the private, but on public property, which for the most part, under our state constitution, has been held in the public trust, that yes, the voters have a say. Because unfortunately, what we have found, and I am sorry to have to say this, is that the port and the planners are not listening to the people. 8 Washington was clear evidence of that clear evidence. Where a good project is proposed, I have great confidence in the voters. For example, AT&T Park was approved by the voters. The ferry building, the Hunters Point Shipyard, critical waterfront projects. But what worries me about the current trend and why I have gotten involved in this campaign is there are too many people out to make our unique San Francisco waterfront look like Miami Beach. And if so, I think that would be a shame. And as a matter of fact, I think it would be a really bad sign for the economy. We're unique. It's our waterfront that makes us unique. Mr. Valentino, should the voters be asked if height restrictions be placed on any given port project? 
I think it's a very tricky question because once again, when we focus on what the heights are, we don't get into the discussion of the, the complexity of getting mitigations in a project. And what I mean by that is if you say, folks, there could be a, a tall building on this, on, this, on this parcel, what the proponents of B make it out is if this is Miami Beach and it's not, there's not one single proposal anywhere in San Francisco that looks anything like Miami Beach. And I don't think the community would have it at all. There is a community process in place that has fought hard to uh, make sure that the current proposals that are in place have articulated buildings where we've got uh, maybe a few, a, a few tall slender towers in exchange for shorter blocks, uh, parks, integration with transit, affordable housing on site. I think that um, they're creating an enormous distraction and pushing something into one or two words. They keep floating to No Wall and to Miami Beach. Um, and these are not what kind of, uh, these, these are not the projects that anybody's interested in seeing having uh, placed on the waterfront. Again, we're talking about rental housing. We're talking about projects that the port needs to develop income to fix problems that are our problems. They belong to the, all of San Francisco as far as uh, the port properties and sea, wall, sea level rise. Um, so this is, this is not just about uh, who the developers are. So we have a little bit of time left and I'd like to use this time to get your final thoughts on this proposition. Ms. Rennie, would you like to share your thoughts? Thank you. I think yes on B is extraordinarily important so that San Francisco doesn't look like Miami Beach. Who wants to see all along our waterfront those Rincon Tower type buildings that you see as you come across the Bay Bridge? And yet, interestingly enough, when the port and others sought to take B off the ballot, in the court papers that were filed, they said they did not have to pay attention to any height limits whatsoever. They could build whatever they wanted. Under their theory, 10 Empire State Buildings. And so that is why it is critically important that the citizens of San Francisco have a say on what happens on their property. Yes on B applies to public property, public trust property, port property, and the citizens should have a right to have a say. We have in the past, why not now? Mr. Valentino, do you have any final remarks? Sure. Uh, once again, um, there's an enormous distraction by focusing on a Miami, Miami Beach uh, imagery. Again, no one is talking about Miami Beach and the current public process has not produced anything that looks like Miami Beach. One of the challenges that we could have if Prop B passes and a developer goes to the ballot with two choices, tall and short, everybody's focus is gonna be on tall because the no wall folks are gonna go against that initiative and we could get short buildings full block coverage, no parks, reduction or no affordable housing, um, and possibly not solving the problems we have to do at the port at this time. So I think, I, I understand that we have a big challenge as to what our waterfront looks like. The public process is there for us and it is open already. And Prop B is simply a political campaign to focus on heights, to challenge developments that could do a lot of good for the port, that can create a lot of parks, a lot of affordable housing, bring people to the waterfront and do good for the city. And I'm really concerned. Well, thank you both for your comments and thank your you. time. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Election Department website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And you can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, June 3rd.